time can be particularly tricky to deal with, and one of the things we as journalists might frequently run across is police data that has a date time stamp on it on when the police uh, received a call, um, when they dispatched their officers, and when the officers arrived on the scene, and maybe even other things like when they left the scene. But we may want to know how much time elapsed between when the call was received and when the officers arrived on the scene, what's typically referred to as the response time. When we have the data set up it, like we do here with uh, a date time stamp all in one field, we need to do a little wrangling to get it um, to a way that we can actually calculate a response time in minutes. Uh, the other problem we have to deal with is when a call runs across midnight. So let's say they get the call, um, like here one of these, uh, the call came in at 11.59 p.m. on the 1st, and the officer did not arrive there until 12.10 a.m. on the 2nd. So we have to deal with that um, in order to make it work. So let's look at some of the formulas that we can use to do this. So first of all, we need to strip the time portion out of the date time and put it in its own field. And that's what this first part here does. It's a, it's a time function, which works really similar to date. If you looked at that other, one of the earlier videos, um, it, it pulls out the hour, minute, and second and converts it into a time. What we're going to do here is multiply that by 86,400, which is the number of seconds in a day, to convert that time into seconds. And basically, it means seconds elapsed since midnight. But it's, it's a way to express that time in a, a simple number rather than a timestamp. So we're going to do that for the, arri the, res the time that the call was received and the call time the call was, was they arrived at the scene and make two new fields. And then we're also going to strip out the dates into separate fields so that we can figure out whether the call jumped across midnight. So we're going to use the date function to strip out the year, month, day, and create that as just a standalone date field. So we're going to also do that for received time and arrived, uh, received date and arrived date. And then here's where it's going to get a little crazy. Um, this formula is going to calculate the response time. And this combines a little bit of math and a lot of an if-then statement. Um, an if-then statement is a logical function in Excel that allows you to to do one thing if something is true and something else if it's false. In this case, what we want to do is evaluate whether or not the call is uh, the received date and the arrived date are the same. Did the call did they arrive on the scene on the same date that the call came in? If they did not, that means it ran across midnight and we've got to handle it a little bit differently. So what this function is doing is looking at our received date and our arrive date, that's what this L4 and M4 are, and says, are they equal to each other? If they are, then here's the true portion. And what that is, it's taking the arrive time, expressed in seconds, minus the receive time, and, and it will give us uh, an answer and how much time elapsed between um, the, the, received, the call was received and the officer arrived. Here's the portion if that is false, if it, if it crosses midnight. So what we have to do is take uh, the 86,400 seconds and date minus receive time um, to, to convert that and then um, add the arrive time to that and that will give us um, the true number of seconds that have elapsed even taking into account that it's crossed midnight. And then so that's the if statement. And then all the way at the very end, we're dividing the whole answer, whichever one answer it is, depending on the if statement, it's either one's going to come out in seconds. We're going to divide that by 60 so we convert the seconds to minutes. So let's put this into action in Excel. I've already baked these formulas in so you didn't have to watch me type. So here we're going to create a new column with receive time, and that's going to take grab the time out of our received date column uh, and convert it into seconds. And then I simply drag this across. And you'll see this one's the, the answer is the same because it actually is the same on this first one. Um, but it 
by copying my formula across, it automatically guessed, oh, now you want to do your work on the I column. And then here's that the date. It's pulling out the date from that received. And then also pulling out the date from arrived. So now we have four new columns that we're going to do our work on. We're essentially going to ignore H and I, our original columns now, and just do the work here. So I'm going to copy these four down. And then our response minutes, our response calculation is going to give us an answer in minutes. And now this first one, of course, is going to give us a zero because they put down the received and the arrived at the same time. And this is probably a situation where the police officer actually called something in and while they were on the scene, um, not, a not, a like, not like a 911 call. But if we copy this down, we should see now uh, some elapsed time. Look at this one, 112 minutes um, from how long it took for the officers to get there. Crazy. Keep in mind that um, this function for splitting out the time and not, you don't necessarily have to convert it to seconds, but that might also be, if, if I'll take that, this off for a second, if you might uh, need to do that and if you want to just show the time in a separate field, um, it's probably going to show up in here as a number, so we're going to format the cells and make it a time. Uh, yeah, I'm going to leave it like that. See, in that there's, it's expressing it as time. So you, this could be a function that's useful for some other things besides just a response time. 